Hello, Jeremy Morgan here, and this video is how to install Apache, PHP, MySQL in Windows the easy way. This is a way that you can set up a w internal web server on your desktop so that you can do development in PHP on your desktop without having to upload it to a server and check it. This may not seem like a huge time saver, but over a, a long amount of time with uh, big enterprise projects, it's definitely a time saver. And speaking of time savers, we're actually not going to install Apache, PHP, and MySQL altogether. We're going to use XAMPP, which bundles it. Now, if you want to get a little bit more advanced, you can install Apache, PHP, and MySQL all separately and then tie them together. It's not a very difficult process, and it's better for a little bit more control over what you're doing. But XAMPP is definitely better for beginners, I've found. Now, the first thing I want to do is go to Google and we will look for XAMPP and as you can see it's right there and then we want to scroll down to XAMPP for Windows and scroll down to download and right up at the top there you'll see XAMPP 1.7.3 and you can download the self-extracting executable Now to save a little time, I've already downloaded it here to this folder, so we will double click on the executable and get started. Now here it's going to ask for a destination folder. This is where you're going to want to put all of the program files, and so I'll put XAMPP and click install. Okay, now it's done. And just as a note, it will be a little bit slower on your machine. I cut that part out of the video just to save us time so you're not sitting twiddling your thumbs while it's installing. And the first question is, should I ask, add shortcuts to the start menu and desktop? I'm going to select yes. The current directory does not match configured directory. I must relocate. I put yes. Should I make a portable XAMPP without drive letters? Now this one I'm going to choose no. As it says in the notes, it's for if you want to use USB sticks with XAMPP. So you can take uh, XAMPP on a USB stick and plug it into another computer and run it. And since we're doing desktop development on this desktop, I'm going to select no. And it's going to start relocating. And it's ready to use. Here it's going to say I have set the time zone to America Los Angeles. Press return. And here we have the startup menu. And you can actually exit out of that because you don't need to use it. Okay, and for this next part, we'll drag over the desktop icon and we'll double click on XAMPP control panel. Now here you'll have a control panel that pops up that has Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Mercury, and you can start any of these at any time. And Apache started, and you can stop. Now if you click on service, that will install it as a service. Every time you turn your computer on, Apache will come on. This might be good for some users, but generally I want to be able to turn the services off when I'm not using them so it's not taking up extra memory. So I generally don't install them as services. I just uh, start the services as they're needed when I'm doing development. So let's go ahead and start it up and we'll uh, see what we see in localhost. I'll drag this down a little bit. And what you'll want to do is type in localhost and there's your XAMPP page, which shows that it's installed successfully. You've got a set of languages here you can select from. Now one of the things we'll do here, let's go ahead and start up our MySQL server while we're at it and we'll click on English. It says congratulations you have successfully installed XAMPP on this system. Now here you can check all kinds of different things. You can check the status, security, components. PHP info is one of the most helpful pages we have here. If you scroll through here this will show all the settings that have been dialed in for you by XAMPP. And sometimes you will need to refer to these settings and you'll need to change them in your PHP INI if uh, something isn't enabled that needs to be or you want to disable some things. 
getting to know your PHP INI is very important for your server because you can you can change a lot of stuff. You can add a lot of things. You can remove a lot of things. You can do a lot. One thing that should be noted if you do a lot of custom PHP INI stuff, if you upload it to your web server, there is a possibility that they won't have the same settings or the same software installed that you do. So you definitely have to be careful with building software around configuration. You know, there are ways around that also. If you can change the PINI on your server that you're hosting at, then you're fine. But if not, then you will run into problems. So let's go ahead and go into our XAMPP folder here. And we'll want to go to htdocs. This is where your HTML documents are stored that are being displayed right now. So you can go in and you can edit either of these, if you'd like, to change some things. So we're going to go ahead and edit this in Notepad++. We're going to edit index.php. Now, as you can see here, it looks like it redirects us to the XAMPP installation. So this is actually the XAMPP folder is where it's being pulled out of. Now generally I create my own web folder and point everything to that. It depends. If you really want this interface that they give you here, which is actually very helpful, you have your PHP info, pair info, Perl, ASP, things like that. These are all really helpful things that you can have. It's just a personal preference of mine to dump everything in a web folder and then I end up going to those different things like PHP admin from a different way. But that's all personal preference. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit our index PHP and we'll just temporarily wipe everything out of here. We'll put a little uh, HTML in here, just to verify a working installation. And we'll load up the web server, and we have this works. So we can see that the web server is working. Now for the second part of this, in order to do the exercises that I'm showing on YouTube, what I'm using to access the database is MySQL Workbench. This is available from mysql.com. I will provide the links at the end of this video. And we'll go ahead and set this up really quick. And we'll put complete. Uh, this is one of the most powerful free tools I've ever seen for MySQL. And it's definitely worth the download and it's free. And I should point out that everything we've downloaded tonight has been free. So you can actually create your own very interact with a plethora of free tools. So it's very nice. And now setup is finished installing the workbench. Now after we go ahead and click finish it will load up the MySQL workbench for the first time. So we can open a connection to start querying. 127.0.0.1, as most people know, is your local host. So we'll leave that the way it is. The username is root. The password is blank. So we'll click OK. And here we can actually see in our PHP server test tables. Or sorry, MySQL server. And that concludes this video of how to set up a internal server. Now uh, I use Notepad++ to do these edits here and that's one of the best free editors for PHP that I've found. And what you can do is you can clear all of this out and start putting your own sites in or you can create subfolders or like I said you can create a web directory and change the HTTP conf so that it points to a web folder and then all of your websites can be stored in individual folders. And then you can start developing. You've got a full PHP server You've got a full MySQL server. You can see here you can set up a FileZilla server. You can serve up Mercury, Tomcat. I didn't install that option on here, but it is on here. And you can do all of your right on your desktop. And you can actually deploy an entire website onto a web server, but building it on your desktop, which can save hours and hours of time 
for yourself and your customers. Thank you for watching, and I hope you uh, check out more of my videos. Here are some helpful tools that we use tonight. XAMPP, MySQL Workbench, and Notepad++. You can go ahead and pause the video and get those URLs. And these are some excellent tools to build websites.